So we've been uh, looking at this rather uh, uninteresting program, uh, which was uh, serving a purpose. That is, we were uh, covering some concepts that uh, you have to know in order in order to be a programmer. But uh, it's not interactive. It's not. Uh, it doesn't doesn't seem like fun. Uh, so let's let's make this a little more interactive so that anybody can use it and 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 it has some value. So the way we're going to do that is uh, is we will um, make the user enter a side rather than us uh, hard coding the side where we specify what the side is and then we we are simply printing things as we go along we'll make it interactive so um, so in order to do that we know how to print things to the screen but we don't know yet how to how to um, get input from from the user so uh, in order to do that there is a function um, part of the standard IO um, it's called scanf so what I'd like to do is, rather than have my side automatically incremented, I want to take that out. And also, I I don't I no longer want this uh, because I, I I don't want to initialize a side or print anything to start with. I'm going to take that out as well, and I'm going to ask the user for input. So um, so the right thing to do is to prompt the user for input. So I say printf. Um, I ask the user to give room side and I prompt the user I uh, I leave it there and and now the user is gonna type something and I read it by using this function called scanf so scanf will read it but the format for for the scan f function is that we have to say what we're going to read that is what is the type of the variable we're going to read uh, in this case we said it's going to be a long unsigned long so we'd say ld and so when we read it we're going to put it into the variable side the way we specify the destination which is in this case the variable side is by putting an ampersand in front of it and we will learn later on what the significance of the ampersand is. Suffice it to say that the uh, scanf function requires that any variable that you're going to be modifying be pre prefixed with an ampersand to it. So all this is saying then is uh, when this subroutine executes, it's going to read um, read what the user types in and puts it into a variable site. So now I have a site which I'm going to pass to the area calculate area subroutine which is going to compute that and it's going to print that now what i'm also going to do then is uh, rather than leave it uh, leave it uninteractive if the user does type a wrong uh, input then i'm going to um, say if the area is equal to is is not equal to zero then i'm going to print the side um, uh, print the rooms information but if it is equal to zero I'm gonna put an else condition which says else print F and this time I'm gonna give some informative message back saying I want we're saying that the size uh, cannot exceed 25 meters and I'm gonna put the new line or the carriage return in front and at the end so that it looks more um, more pretty as far as our output is concerned. Uh, the one other thing I'm also gonna do is I will um, first close this. So every every if statement, so we saw that the if statement has the syntax where we specify say if what condition to check, a curly brace of what to do when the condition is satisfied, and when the condition is not satisfied, we put the statements, wrap the statements in quotes, and prefix them with else. So, so this will take care of um, telling the user that he has typed in a wrong, wrong information. Now, 
what what I also want to do is um, is that allow the user to quit this program. Um, in in embedded systems, we often write programs which never quit. That is, they're operational because you turn on the M system and it's running indefinitely with you until you turn it off. Um, but just to to, to capture another feature, I'm going to give the user a possibility of quitting this program, and I'm going to say type in zero to quit. So when the user types in zero, I want to quit this program. But which means that this loop that John introduced, which is an infinite loop that runs forever, needs to have a way of breaking out of. So I'm going to change this condition, which says um, the while loop is similar to the if loop in that there's a condition here. I'm going to put a condition here. I'm going to say that if the size, as long as the size is not equal to zero, keep executing this loop. I'm sorry, side, not side, side. As long as the side is not equal to zero, keep executing this loop. When the user types in a zero, quit this loop. So let's save it and let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to um, rebuild it and I'm going to hit the debug button. I run it and it is an interactive mode, so you don't see anything right now. Well, I haven't run it yet, so I'm going to run it. So it says, this room calculates areas of square-shaped rooms, give the room size, and now I can enter a value. Let's say I entered the value 4. So it says, area of the room with side 4 meters is 16 square meters. Looks like it's doing what we want. So yep. let's, let's try another number, 15. Well, seems like it's working. Um, so let's give a wrong number, something that is that it's not programmed to work for. So I'm going to give the number 30 meters. And we'll say, yes, it's an informative message. Size cannot exceed 25 meters. Please type in something else. So I'm going to type in something else. So let's say I type in four, uh, four again, or uh, 12 and it works. So if I want to quit this program, then I'm going to type in a zero, and zero should quit. It does quit, as you will, as it as we expected. Does it quit? It didn't ask for more input. Yeah, uh, we know it quit because it's not asking us for more input. Uh, but there is this ugly message here. So one of the things we want you to do as a as an exercise is to think about what cause this extra message to show up and see if you can get rid of it. That'll be one of your tasks as a follow-up to sh demonstrating the understanding of your code. So um, we, we made the code interactive. Um, let's summarize what we, uh, what we learned in this module. Um, so we, when we write our programs, we have certain mandatory sections and some, some optional sections. Uh, I call the documentation as an optional section, but it is, in some sense, a good practice. So this is our first section. I'm calling it section zero. And when we then we have our preprocessor directive section, which will list our uh, list our libraries that we use. And then we have our uh, global declarations section. declarations section which has two components to it one is the global variable and the second is uh, um, is the function prototype so the global variable section this is section two and then our last section which is a subroutine section which is section three now uh, which which will contain our main subroutine main as well as any other subroutines in this case We have the bodies of our subroutines So the subroutine section will have the bodies the main the initialize the calc area and any other subroutines you have um, and And we can make this program a little more interesting uh, one thing we could do is uh, is make the error code be accessible in multiple places we see that it's accessible in initialize it's initialized there it's been modified here but we haven't used it in the main so I'm just gonna make a small change to this so that I can use it here so what I'm gonna do is once the program quits I'm gonna print a statement 
which will say goodbye and will also um, print something that says uh, um, mistake count equals LD and then we simply specify what the error count is and we we end our program. So this way we have access error in three different places. So this shows you why we use global variables because we want to share. So this wraps up our um, module and uh, look forward to doing some exercises so that you can practice these concepts in some more with some more rigor.